We always called this blackberry pie, but it doesn't have a crust all the way around, so I guess it's just blackberry dumplings. But anyway, we're going to start off with blackberries in a pot because that's how this thing starts. We're going to put just enough water in there to kind of cover the bottom and make sure everything doesn't burn and kind of bring that up to a simmer. Next, I put about a half a cup of sugar in on these, and this is going to help draw some of that natural juice out of those blackberries. And then we're just going to give this a stir as it continues to cook. After a couple of minutes and the sugar's dissolved, all the juices have started coming out of these blackberries. We're going to go ahead and cover all of the fruit with water and continue to simmer. That's going to keep anything from burning and sticking to the bottom of the pan here. Now, blackberries actually contain pectin if you've ever made jam. That's why you don't need to add any gelatin or anything. It will actually gel up just like store-bought jellies or anything. But since we've added so much water to this, we're going to go ahead and make a roux to kind of just help thicken everything up when it finishes. And that's just going to be equal parts butter and flour. Here I've got probably two tablespoons of each. And we're going to cook this around a minute until that flour gets fully cooked. You may start seeing some browning in it. And... When we get everything fully cooked, we can just add a little bit of water to this to kind of deglaze the pan. We're keeping it really thick because it's going to be our thickening agent. We're not making a gravy or anything here. But when we get all that combined together, we're just going to add it back to our blackberries. Again, we're going to make sure that our fruit is basically covered with water here as we add this and bring it back up to a simmer and start to thicken. And then next, we're going to work on our dough. This is a great time to taste this and see if you've got it sweet enough. In the beginning, I recommend not quite putting in as much sugar as you think you'll need because you can always add more in later. So here I do add another uh, quarter cup or so just to get things up to taste. This dough is pretty straightforward. I use three cups of self-rising flour and one cup of milk. This is entirely too much dough for what I have, so I do recommend cutting this in half. But anybody that's made biscuits should be pretty you know, familiar with this technique. I'm not putting any butter in this because I wind up putting it into the blackberries here in a moment, but we're just going to get all of this combined into a dough and roll this out. Onto a floured surface, I get this dough kind of worked out and then I grab my rolling pin to get it as flat as I possibly can. I wind up getting it around an eighth of an inch. Uh, if you can get it thinner, great. If not, like don't kill yourself doing this. But like I said, this was way too much dough, but a good tip here to get the perfect topper for your container is to actually take your container, set it in the middle of the dough where it'll fit, and then kind of trim out around, and then it'll fit in there perfectly. And then you can just take a pizza cutter and cut all the scraps up into your dumplings here. Uh, about a one inch by one inch square is going to be almost perfect for these. But, um, you know, you may want huge dumplings. If you do, you're just going to have to cook it longer on the stove for them to get done. And now at this point, I'm going to kill the heat and start throwing in some of these dumplings. I threw in way too many, if that's even a thing. But, you know, just you're going to have to go by feel on this. If you like dumplings, just absolutely fill it to the brim. If they're not your jam, uh, then maybe don't throw as many in. But, uh, like I said, way too many. And then I threw in a half a stick of butter and the reason that I killed the heat earlier is I'm about to add a little bit of milk and I didn't want to scald that so the dumplings and the butter are going to bring down the temperature enough that your milk doesn't immediately scald and then you'll just slowly bring it back up to a boil once everything's incorporated. This obviously will cook faster if you throw a lid on it however it will boil over if you're not paying attention um, so you're going to either need to keep an eye on it and just stir it when it gets up to the lid or you can stick some silverware between the lid and the pot to let some of that steam escape. It's a, another good time to taste this and make sure everything's going just like you want it to. And then these will need to boil until the dumplings are done. Um, and once they are done, we can transfer it into a greased pan that we've used to measure the top of our dough perfectly. And then we'll poke some holes in that so that it doesn't just balloon up in the oven and stick that on top. Now I place some thinly sliced pieces of butter all the way around this top and then hit it with some cinnamon sugar, which is a quarter cup of sugar and a teaspoon of cinnamon or however you like that, and just lightly dust the top of this. This is going to go into a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes or until the crust is golden brown. Now you're going to want to let this cool. Actually, you're probably not, but if you don't, your mouth will 
be very upset with you the next day. So let this cool just a little bit and then get yourself a spoon and get it into a dish. This pairs perfectly with vanilla ice cream, of course, and a tall glass of milk. Um, I hope y'all give this a shot. My grandmother used to make this all the time, and it's not exactly like she did. I'm kind of going from memory, and I got my mom to help on this one too. But it's pretty darn close, and it tugs on all of those nostalgia chords. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Really hope y'all enjoyed, and uh, I will see y'all next time.